What's happening guys, Salam Mike, welcome to another rendition of me coaching you guys, fixing your form, coaching subscribers for free. Uh, if you want to get involved, send a video to askmikke at gmail.com. We need 70% for a couple triples and shoot the video landscape high quality. Uh, first thing I see on my man's squat right here is we need to get that walkout a little bit more efficient. We want two to three steps maximum. Uh, one, we're going to save energy and two, we're going to allow ourselves to stay tight in a good position without the are wobbling. Uh, three, I know no one wants to hear it, but it looks like you're a little bit high. We got to work on that depth. Um, I believe you have a heeled shoe on, so uh, you can see your feet move around and kind of wobble around. I'll try moving that stance in a little bit and also pushing forward into your knees more at the start. You may have a wrestling shoe. Either way, uh, knees forward a little bit more um, as well as knees out and continue to lighten the weight and work on your form. Uh, my man right here, first suggestion I got for you is we need a flatter shoe. Those look decent, but the flatter, the stiffer the shoe, the better. Um, otherwise, our form's looking pretty dang solid. Um, as tight as you can get that upper back, uh, if the bar position is comfortable, I'd say keep it. Moving a little bit hair down may be okay, uh, but what I'd like to see is as active as you could be with pulling those elbows not only together, trying to touch your elbows together behind you, and also pulling those elbows down. Um, so not necessarily uh, down towards your front of you, but think about doing a lat pull down or pulling that bar down into your traps, pulling the bar into your body, bending it almost over your neck. Um, otherwise, the form seems pretty dang decent. Uh, from this angle, depth seems solid. Uh, looks like you're taking a good breath. If you're not, make sure you're taking a nice big breath into that stomach. Uh, coming out of the hole in the slow-mo, you can see your hips shoot up just a hair. Uh, it's not going to be a huge deal, but another cue that I constantly use with nearly everyone is thinking about driving your traps, pushing your back into the barbell. Oh, good. We got another angle. Yeah, those, those shoes are fairly flat. I think they're like a trail running shoe, uh, but a, a lower to the ground, uh, thinner shoe would be better. Um, from this angle, still pretty solid. That second rep, you just rush yourself, and that's why the hips shoot up. Your breathing and bracing looks good. First and third rep are a little bit more solid because you don't rush it, so you don't have that collapse of your torso angle with the uh, hips shooting up early. So breathe and brace. We want to be quick but not hurry on the way down. Uh, we want to control ourselves but yet still be aggressive so we can get some rebound. Um, again, if you push your knees forward and out, uh, keeping your hips back just a little, uh, a little bit of wiggle on that setup is just fine, but again, we want it as most, um, as most efficient as we can. Uh, but overall, it seems pretty good. So not collapsing the hole, Biggest things, people always talk about it, hips shooting up out of the hole on either squats or deadlifts. It doesn't really matter. Um, it tends to happen when, one, our back is not tight enough and our breathing and bracing is not correct. I want to control that midline, and what I mean by that is we want to get as stiff as possible between our hips and our shoulders. Stay stiff out there, gentlemen. Tip from Silent Mike. Uh, so as tight as you can breathe, you want to breathe into your belly button, your sides, your low back, flex down. You want that in a straight line as well as flexing your lats. And that's what I talked about earlier of pulling those elbows together and downward. That'll keep that torso rigid so when you do push into the bar, uh, you'll be better off. Your legs can move um, the force from into the ground and into the bar. Uh, again, that cue of driving your shoulders Pushing your back into the bar is what I think. Basically, um, my form is decent. You know, I've squatted for many and many years, uh, and the only cue I get is when I'm unracking, I get as tight as I can, squeezing my back almost painfully, so pulling that bar across for me, and then uh, out of the hole, I'm just thinking about driving my shoulders, pushing my back into that barbell. Um, that set looks really solid. Here we go with the slow-mo. We got the tushy wiggle, and slow-mo, you can do anything. It somehow it turns into a dance or a twerk. Um, my man, really solid squat. One of the most solid squats we've seen on here, to be honest. I don't know why you have gloves on. You might get ripped for it. Again, I'd like to be positive through this whole thing. Uh, but if you're trying to get your power lifting life on, we're going to have to toughen up those hands. Uh, some wrist wraps on a lower bar position can be helpful. Um, but if you plan to compete in power lifting, there is no, uh, excuse me, uh, gloves allowed. So let's toughen up those hands. Squats, it should be fine. Um, and really good work on the squat. Who and what do we have next? Again, if you guys are new, be sure to subscribe to this thing. Give this video a thumbs up. Share with your friends. Dropping this video every Sunday with this series, trying to coach you guys. Uh, and then every, the other days, we got vlogs, instructionals, all that. Here we go. Next squat. 
Um, right there looks pretty dang solid. Uh, I would like to see my man not over press or over push at the top and make that little uh, whippy effect. Although it feels good to be aggressive and lock out at the top at the top quarter uh, can cause injury in the long term. Uh, we have a slight arch in the low back going into there. And from this angle, it looks like that belt may be a little bit tight. Uh, a commonality I see is obviously people having issues with breathing and bracing, but not only breathing and bracing incorrectly um, to think about, but uh, the cue. Uh, but the issue is that the belt is too tight and you can't breathe into your stomach. And now, again, you can't technically breathe into your stomach, but we want that belt with maybe a finger um, width of looseness on there. So you can shove your finger in there. And then we want to fill that up with our stomach. This pull actually looks really, really solid. Back's in a good position. Uh, femurs are fairly short and arms are pretty long, so you can kind of get into a kind of a squatting position right there. Uh, what I would like is maybe a hair higher hip position from that um, because on that last rep, you could see your low back around a little bit in a higher hip position at the start, almost falling backwards, pushing to the hips that I've talked about so many times uh, may help you out. Uh, bench, I think we got our same gentleman. He threw all three in here, and all three look pretty dang solid. Um, Maybe we get another angle or maybe we just get the slow-mo. We'll see what's happening. Uh, but for on those reps, uh, bench look good. What I always suggest for anyone is working uh, on the bench press a liftoff. Um, I know there's big lifters. I know there's some of the guys you like to watch that bench really big weights with no liftoff. But if you're getting your back properly tight, squeezing your scapula together and down and going to maintain that from the setup throughout your entire uh, set every single rep uh, a liftoff is going to be so helpful you get it in a competition um, and obviously if you're not, not competing it's just going to help you not only stay tighter to lift more weight activate the most muscles but also stay safe and stay healthy so you're pretty tight on your setup but when you go on the unrack you kind of untuck that shoulder if you guys want to look back at yesterday's video i kind of talk about grip width uh, and the shoulder and its role kind of in um, pressing movements here we go. We got more walkout issues, everyone. I may maybe have to do a video on walking out itself uh, to kind of teach you guys the two or three um, walk step out. Again, if you guys want to be involved with this, I'd like to see around 70%, uh, 75% for sets of three because once you start to get too heavy, uh, if you guys are novice or even intermediate, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on with your form. Uh, for my man right here, uh, again, the belt may be a hair tight. I'd like to see a, uh, maybe a bit looser so you can breathe and push out into it. Uh, from this video, from this rep right here, I'd also... Uh, Probably suggest uh, experimenting with a narrower stance. Uh, your knees are just kind of in an odd position right there. So if you could move your stance in, maybe even toes a hair straighter, uh, and then on your descent, you're going to push into those knees a little bit. Uh, you have a very vertical shin, which isn't necessarily wrong. Uh, I just think for the majority of lifters uh, to get a little bit more quad activation, to hit depth a little bit more efficiently, a little faster. Is this the same gentleman going a little bit lighter? I can't tell. I thought they had similar shirts. Um, to get a little bit more efficient uh, depth and to get more activation in the legs, which obviously is going to help you lift more weight in the long run, uh, a stance in, pushing into your knees, and maybe toes a bit straighter. Kind of looks like the same guy because the squat form looks similar. Uh, you do have a little bit longer femurs, and from this angle, it's not as bad, uh, but I do suggest moving the stance in maybe an inch or two each side. We want to get that knee perfectly onto kind of the ball of our foot or the midfoot at the bottom of the hole. Uh, set up, you know, you, you have your tradition, you have your routine, and that is something I suggest everyone does. Some people look silly, some people like to make noises, some people do a little dance, whatever it may be, but as long as it's repeatable and it's something that gets you into the right mindset to do the same thing every single time because every rep, regardless of weight, should be the same, so the setup should be the same. Whatever it takes for you to get mentally ready and physically tight and ready to do the set, uh, I do suggest kind of get in routine like a basketball player shoots a free throw. Um, the squat's really solid. Uh, you know, you're obviously handling well over 400 pounds, so it's pretty dang decent. Um, back looks fairly tight. I'd say if you can move your hands in a little bit, it'll only help everything tighten up. Uh, but the main gig we're looking at is moving those feet in about an inch, maybe even two inches per side, pushing into your knees a little bit, let them float forward, um, and then really driving up into that barbell, what we got next. We got some sumo action. Not too bad, not too bad. Um, a little bit of head movement, so on all three movements, we'd like to keep our head in the same position, especially while under load. It's just going to keep us safer, help our balance, and help the repeatability of the lift. Um, something very common here, which we talked about, I think, last week's episode of Fixing Your Technique, um, is squatting the weight up. Now, it takes a very unique individual on how they're built and how strong they are um, to be able to squat the weight up. The majority of us really have to hip hinge and deadlift the weight up. So for you, my friend, I'd like to see your hips a hair higher. You can see you're kind of hinging on 
on your belt and we need to hinge on our hips. So uh, a really big breath obviously would help the little bit bigger um, breath into the stomach and flexing the lats, but I'd also think a higher hip position and more vertical shin in your case. You can see the bar floating around. It has to go around your knees because your knees are going forward. Uh, 80 or plus percent of you that pull sumo, we need a vertical shin. Not everybody, but the majority of us. So a higher hip position, pulling that bar into you and getting your weight falling backwards uh, is going to be the ultimate way to do that for you, my friend. You do have a little bit longer torso. It seems like you have a little bit of hip flexibility, which isn't bad. It's actually good. Um, so maybe even moving that stance in an inch hips higher and then you have to fall backwards we can't have you um jerking that weight up because once the weight gets too heavy your chest is going to fall forward your hips are going to shoot up and you won't be able to complete 90 95 percent and 100 percent without throwing all the load into your low back again guys i do appreciate you thumbs up subscribe videos dropping tuesday thursday saturday sunday every week let's go